Welcome to Business Technology Made Simple, where we discuss current business technology trends, interview business professionals, and discuss ways that you can improve your business. Whether you work for a large enterprise or just starting your own business, I hope to provide you with valuable information that will help you grow as a business leader. Welcome to Business Technology Made Simple. I'm your host, Seth Neds, and today I'm excited to share with you eight must-have technologies to start a business. So if you're an entrepreneur and you're trying to start a business, these are some technologies to keep in mind that you'll probably need for pretty much any business. So I'm trying to cover it broadly today, and then in future episodes, we'll talk through the specific technologies, and then we'll talk through different industries and and other technologies that might be added to this list for those industries. So I want your suggestions and feedback from what industry you're in so that I can tailor my future episodes to meet your needs uh, and to, to share some helpful information with you. So number one, you're going to want a company email. If you're starting a business, you need a way to communicate with your customers, and you probably don't want to use the email you created in high school, if you're me. Um, some of you may have not even touched email if you're just getting started in business and you're Gen, Gen Z or whatever, but you don't want to use your personal email for, for work. So I would recommend getting a tool like Google Workspace. They've got a subscription for small business, and you can use, I actually have a lot of tools in there. We'll, we'll talk about some more of them, but they give you a business email. And the other piece that goes with that is a domain. So you need a business domain name. Um, But Google Workspace or Office 365 for small business, you can use those to get your suite of business tools, including a business email. But I mentioned earlier the the domain name. That is what is in, uh, like, so if you go to google.com, Google.com is the domain name, and you probably want a domain specific to your business. So I'm actually putting that as the second must-have business technology because if you want to have a professional email, you have to have a domain name. Whether or not you have a website, you still have to buy the domain name. So you can go to sites like uh, domains.google or domain.com, Dreamhost, Namecheap. Those are some of the sites you can go to to get get a domain name. But be sure to go out there, type in whatever the, the domain name you want. Maybe your first name, last name, .com. And <laughs> a lot of people think that there's only .com, .net, .org. There's actually like hundreds of, um, I forget what it's called. Uh, I'll, I'll link it. <laughs> there's hundreds of those, .com, .org, .whatever, that you can add. So maybe... You want to pick the one that that makes the most sense for your organization. I'll just put it that way. So if you have an org, .org, if you have commercial, retail, you might be able to even do .retail. There's different tools you can do or different terms you can use. So for sure, get a domain name. That's number two. Number three, along with that, is a company website. So you've already done most of the work, not really, but kind of, to get your domain name. So now you have to have a website behind that domain name. So if someone gets an email from you, uh, jsmith at yourcompany.com, and they try to go to your dump, your, <laughs> your dumpany, your company.com, they're not going to get anything because, or at least not, <laughs> not your, your website, maybe somebody else's. Um, no, it wouldn't be somebody else's. But anyways, they're not going to get anything because you don't have a website behind that domain. So be sure to build a website, even if it's just a landing page that shows some information about your business or and your products and services. That way you have an online presence and people can learn more about your business. So I would recommend tools, you know, kind of your your standard tools like Wix or WordPress to build the website. They have themes. If if you want to do it yourself, you can use those tools. Big Commerce is another one for specifically focused on e-commerce and selling products. Uh, there's a lot of businesses out there too that will actually make your website for you and do all that work for you. So you can make that decision whether you want to build it or buy it from someone else. But either way, you're going to need a company website. And I'll leave some of the, a link to some of the website builders down there to at least get you started. In addition to those, those uh, providers, the website builders, will link to a web, web hosting provider. So you need someone 
uh, some company out there to host your website. It's essentially storing the website information in the cloud for you. Uh, one that's probably best for beginners is Bluehost, but another one um, that I've I've heard of is iPage. That is is good for a budget. I haven't used iPage, but they say it's good. So there's one that you can can look at. Um, and that's really covers number three, the company website. All right. So now you've got your email. You've got a professional email with your domain name that you've purchased. And you have a website that if they go to that domain name.com, they will see your website. And now you have customers that are starting to ask about products. You have potential customers, I should say. Um, what are, whether you call them just contacts or leads or prospects and they're starting to ask about your products and services, now you need a tool to manage those prospects, leads, contacts. And that tool is called a CRM, a Customer Relationship Management System. So that there's many of those tools out there. Uh, the, The industry leader is Salesforce, and they're known for larger implementations and larger organizations, but they do have a smaller version of Salesforce called Salesforce Essentials, and that's targeted towards the small business market. So you could look at that and see their pricing compared to others, like Zoho CRM is another one out there. Freshworks is also targeted more to the small and medium business, and then HubSpot as well. Um, One thing about HubSpot to note is they have a free version of a CRM, which is to, you know, it doesn't have a ton of functionality, but it allows you to get in there, really play with CRM, and and it's not that much different from the other options out there. So I'd recommend just down, you know signing up for a HubSpot account, trying it out, see what CRM is all about, and uh, if you go with something else, that's fine. But it's a good tool to to get you started. So we've got our customers, we've got our website, we've got our email, we've got all that working, but now we need to be able to manage our work. So our customer is asking us to do X, Y, Z for them. And then other customers asking us to do work for them. And how are we gonna, gonna manage that work and prioritize? So that's where you need, number five, a project management tool. You need a place to take what's in your brain and put it down on paper. Uh, I know people, like for example, my wife is very smart and she keeps a lot of tasks in her brain, but even she at times forgets a task. So. I'd recommend if you're that kind of person, you just need to use a project management tool to be able to to keep track of everything or else it's just going to, your brain's going to explode as your business grows. It's, it's just not scalable. So use a project management tool. It allows you to collaborate with other um, people on your team and manage work together, prioritize, manage risk, various things like that. And you can get started with something as simple as a spreadsheet, which I probably wouldn't recommend long term, but you can do that if you have the Google Workspace subscription. You could use a Google Sheet or Excel document to kind of make sure it's on, uh, online, but you could have an Excel document or sh- uh, Google Sheets spreadsheet in the cloud to collaborate on work. Um, or you can use a tool that's more built for project management, but that's still free, like Trello or Asana. There's free versions of those. And then some paid tools that are similar are Monday.com, Rike is another one, Rike.com. And then Microsoft has one called Project. Microsoft Project is pretty well known for detailed project plans. And uh, their on- project online is what I would recommend so you can collaborate. And then uh, Planner, Microsoft Planner, I believe comes with the Microsoft 365 subscription. So if you go with that one for small business, it's either comes with it or or it could be a cheaper price because you're you bought some of the tools so those are some some examples of there's a lot of them out there so that's not an exhaustive list but if you if you got one you use that i didn't mention uh, please leave it a comment below mentioning your favorite project management tool and i'd love to hear you know other suggestions you guys have especially for small business and uh, entrepreneurs starting a business and number six, I think this one's very important. It's an online file storage system. You need a place away from your physical computer to store your files. Otherwise, if you have a fire in your office or you know something happens, you need a place that your files are backed up. You have version control where if you make a change, you can go back and see who made which change and all that kind of stuff. And those tools are built in to the subscriptions that Google and Microsoft have. So 
the Google Workspace, that's what they're calling it now, it used to be G Suite, um, Google Workspace and Microsoft 365 for business, for small business, uh, those, both of those tools have uh, file storage, cloud file storage tools. So Google Drive for Google and OneDrive, Microsoft OneDrive for Microsoft. But if you decide to not go with those subscriptions, you can still get other tools like Dropbox, Box, and there's others that I'll list. Um, iDrive is another one that you can use for your online data and file storage. Financial management tools is number seven. You have to have a way to manage your finances, right? I mean, if you're in a business, you're taking in money, you're, you're paying your bills, you have to have a way to manage all that or else it's going to be, it's just going to be a disaster. So one that you may have heard of is QuickBooks. That's kind of an industry standard for small, medium businesses. Uh, Wave is another one I saw doing some research on free financial systems. I never used Wave, but it might be a good way to get started, especially since it's free. You can kind of learn it, see if it meets your needs. If not, you've got tools like QuickBooks. FreshBooks is another one, and there's other tools as well, but those are just a, some top ones. So last but not least, security software. You need to have on your device and each of the devices of people that work for you some type of antivirus and security software because you don't want people getting access to your company data and customer data via your cust- or your employee devices. So be sure that all of your devices are secure. They have antivirus software. Uh, the top three that I've, I've seen are ESET endpoint security, number one, Bitdefender for business, number two, and Avira antivirus for small business is number three. There's others out there. Those are the top three. I'd recommend getting those, even though it's it's the software that you don't think about, and a lot of times small businesses don't worry about any kind of cybersecurity or that type of software because you're like, oh, well, nothing happened to me yet. But if it happens, it can be very detrimental to your business and completely knock you out. And it's it can be a easy target for us, you know, cyber criminal to target small businesses that don't tend to invest very much in security. So be sure to invest in some security software to, to make sure your business is safe and you can scale and grow and not worry about that aspect as much. So those are the eight. Those are the top eight must-haves for starting a business. If you have others that I left out, or if there's some that you're like, well, I haven't really used that, I don't think it's needed, feel free to let me know uh, in the comments below if you're on Facebook or YouTube or whatever platform you're watching it on. Or if you're listening to my podcast, feel free to email me uh, to to leave feedback in the form, and I'll leave information about how to contact me in the, in the show notes. Thank you so much for listening. I'm hoping in the next couple episodes to do episodes on the different areas. So get deeper into some of these areas. And then also I'm, I'm excited because I'm going to learn from some of you what the industries are that you're getting into. So please send me your industry, the one that you're looking into getting, looking at getting into. And I'll, I'll try to make a video about those that are the most requested and help you out in any way I can to, to, to see what technologies you need for your business. So thank you so much for your time. Thanks for listening. If you've found this helpful, please subscribe. If you're on other channels where you can like, please do so. Leave comments. I love to have your feedback because that's how I can improve this. So thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.